Okay, so let's work on graphing these ellipses. I'm actually gonna start with the second one. I think this one's a little bit easier to graph and then we'll be able to graph the first one once we kind of see how these are going to work. All right, so the equation of our ellipse is x squared over 64 plus y squared over 100 equals one. So what we want to note is that the larger denominator determines the major axis. So let's write that down. The larger denominator determines the major axis. Now because that 100, the larger denominator, is below a y squared, that means that the major axis will be on the y-axis, and this is gonna be a, the major axis is vertical. So when you have a vertical major axis, our equation takes the form x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals one. So what we have determined, or what we're about to determine, is in our equation we have x squared over 64 plus y squared over 100 equals 1. So based on that information, we know that this is a squared. a squared is equal to 100. If you square root both sides, a is equal to um, positive and negative 10. b squared is going to be equal to 64. If you square root both sides, b is equal to positive or negative 8. So those are going to be the vertices and covertices in our ellipse. So we're going to start by writing out our ordered pairs for the a's because it's a vertical major axis, these are going to be on the y-axis. So those ordered pairs will be 0, 10, and 0, negative 10. Those are the vertices of the ellipse. The covertices will be on the x-axis. These are going to be 8, 0, and negative 8, 0. So let's go to our graph. Um, I can already tell that this only goes up to seven and I need to plot points at 10. So let's just make a note. We're going to count by twos. All right, so let's plot the vertices first on our major axis. So we're at zero, we're gonna count by twos. We're gonna go up to 10. Two, four, six, eight, 10, plot that point. Then we're gonna to go to a negative 10, back to the origin, down two, four, six, eight, 10, plot that point. Those are our vertices. Now the covertices are on the minor axis. We determine that to be a positive eight zero and a negative eight zero. Again, counting by twos, two, four, six, eight. And then negative eight is over there. All right, so the last thing we need to determine is the foci of our graph. Oops, that's gonna be the C value. Remember we said that A squared was equal to B squared plus C squared. So we know that A squared is 100, so I'm just gonna plug in a 100 right here. B squared we said was 64, and then plus C squared. Now I could have plugged in the A and the B values and then I would have squared those and it would have just taken me back to 164. Since I already identified a squared and b squared, I just plugged in the squared values. So let's subtract 64. We get c squared equals 36. Square root both sides, c is equal to a positive and negative six. Now because the major axis is vertical, those are gonna go on the y-axis. So the ordered pairs for your foci are going to be 0, 6, and 0, negative 6. So we are counting by 2s. So we're going to go up 
two, four, six. Maybe I'll put an F to deter or to just note that that is a foci, and we're going to go down six. And now we can draw in our ellipse. It's going to go through the vertex, through the covertex, through the vertex, through the covertex, and back. So this is our major axis that has the foci on it. This is our minor axis. The major axis will always be the longer axis. Okay, now that we've done that, we can run through this one a little bit faster. Um, the larger denominator tells us the major axis. So because that is an x squared, then this is going to be a horizontal major axis. The equation for a horizontal major axis is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. So we can look at our equation, which is x squared over 45 plus y squared over 36 equals 1. All right, well, we said that 45, well, we can see that 45 is going to be our a squared, so a squared equals 45. When you square root both sides, you get a is equal to a positive and negative square root of 45. Here's where this one was just not quite as easy as the other one. We do have to reduce that radical. That breaks down to a square root of 9 times a square root of 5. So really we have a positive and negative 3 root 5. Now because the hor it's a horizontal major axis, these are going to be on the horizontal or the x-axis. So we have a 3 root 5 comma 0 and a negative 3 root 5 comma 0. All right, I kind of took up a lot of space there. Now our b value is 36, or sorry, b squared is equal to 36 which means b is equal to the square root of 36, so plus or minus 6. That's going to go on the minor axis, which is the y-axis. So 0, 6, and 0, negative 6. All right, last thing we need is the foci. We need the c value. We know that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. a squared is 45 b squared is 36, and we don't know what c is. We will solve for c. Thir 45 minus 36 is 9. So when we square root both sides, our c is equal to a positive and negative 3. Because our major axis is horizontal, those are going to be x values. So we have a 3, 0, and a negative 3, 0 for the foci. All right, we just ran through a lot of information, so let's plot these points. Let's start with the major axis. We, well, actually, let's start with the foci. 3, 0 right here. That's a foci. Negative 3, 0 is another foci. Um, the vertices on the major axis, that's that 3 root 5. Here's where you are going to type that in. That's about a 6.7. So if you go out to estimate a 6.7 on both sides, there's your positive and negative vertices. The covertices, that's the um, positive and negative 6 on the y-axis. So if you go up 6 and down to a negative 6, now we can draw in our ellipse. And there we go.